<laughs> what is gravity? You have no idea. Okay, next question. <laughs> So you're telling me gravity is strong enough to hold oceans onto it, battling inertia from the spin. So gravity's holding oceans, inertia's trying to pull it out and make it fling. Skyscrapers would fling off the earth, but this gravity's holding these. It's so strong, it's holding the ocean, but it can't hold a helium balloon. Things that are less dense go up. Things that are more dense go down. Has nothing to do with gravity. Where's gravity at with butterflies? You would think that if gravity's so strong, it's holding skyscrapers down to it, we would be flat on the ground. There is gravity all the way out to the moon and beyond. <laughs> Long before the theory of gravity was a glimmer in Newton's imagination, the natural physics of density and buoyancy already perfectly explained why apples fall down. Objects fall or rise based on their relative density to the medium surrounding them. Apples fall because they are denser than the air, while helium balloons rise because they are lighter. No gravity necessary. This is why raindrops fall down through the air, and air bubbles rise up through water. Everything seeks its relative density and rises or falls until settling accordingly. This is why a tiny pebble sinks to the bottom of the ocean, but gigantic cruise ships and aircraft carriers stay afloat on the surface, because even though a pebble is so small, its mass, relative to its volume, its density, is more than water, so it sinks. And even though a cruise ship is so large, its mass, relative to its volume, is less than water, so it floats. If Newton's apple had landed in a puddle, he would have seen the apple only fell through the air because it was denser than the air, but then floated on top of the water because it was less dense than water. The natural physics of density and buoyancy was understood and agreed upon for centuries before they changed our textbooks and started NASA. All our space information is coming from NASA. NASA.